women are definitely more in danger as hostages. Uh, there have been stories from hostages that have been released, very, you know, tragic stories about these sorts of situations. So definitely, you know, we, we can only pray. I don't know exactly what she's going through, but I'm going to assume based off what I've seen that it's probably pretty dark. So I, I can imagine from the videos and, and, and I just I'm only getting into this because I want to keep it PG, but I want to paint a vivid picture for our viewers, because I think it's important that we talk about these type of things, because we have all these young kids essentially marching around these campuses, acting like they are trying to defend people that are civilians and babies. And, and listen, I, I, and as I swear you do, I don't want to see any type of innocence harmed or a baby, a child, much less be harmed. But at the same time, it's important that the world knows exactly what happened to Israel and exactly what happened to the people that were at this music festival, at this music festival, and exactly what is continuing to happen to these individuals. And clearly these, these hostages have been brutalized. They have been assaulted. Uh, some of them are sick in a weakened condition. And obviously, just because of anatomy reasons, a female is much more problematic because of sexual type of crimes. And I think the UN and other agencies have done their best to try to minimize and undermine these war crimes. I mean, there are actual rules pertaining to war. And this is definitely a violation of everything that has ever been agreed from Geneva Conventions all the way down. Am I correct or how do you see it? Absolutely, yes. I mean, there are so many war crimes happening. Just that is the biggest one, in my opinion. But even as simple as operating out of hospitals in Gaza and, you know, militants that are dressed as civilians that are just trying to blend in, like all of those are war crimes and they're happening on a daily basis right now. Uh, I just think there's a lot of misinformation being spread. I've had a couple people, too, in the chat just to address it. Your name on the screen is, we would say it in America, is Dana, but it's a Hebrew name, as you were explaining to me, and it's pronounced Donna. Is that correct? Yes. Sir. Okay. I just <laughs> want to kind of clarify that. Now, tell us, let's go back to last year, October 7th. We're going to just clarify a few things. Your cousin started in the IDF the day before October 7th, which of course is the day of this terrible tragedy that Israel suffered, but she just joined the IDF right. the day before. Is that correct? Yes. Then fast forward to the very next day, October 7th, she was attending the music festival or she was a first responder responding to a call for help pertaining to this attack. She was a first responder. Uh, so when she heard the alarm, she was one of the people that was rushed over there to try to help. And that's when they were waiting for them. Now, we hear this word a lot, uh, something along the lines of this Kabul. Uh, what is the word that we hear a lot pertaining? It basically means a town in Israel. What do we oh, call kibbutz. these? Kibbutz, right. Yes. Say it one more time for me. 